Back in the 950s, it was a different time, a different place, and uh, the media had just come out of the independence struggle. They had that, that halo, at least the professional cadre of journalists had that halo, halo of being uh, forces for positive change. And the media proprietors had a fairly poor image at that time because they all came out of the Second World War uh, with this uh, stigma of having profiteered through uh, newsprint sales and black market and so on. So, so in that context, you had this Working Journalists Act introduced. <clears throat> you had significant changes in the legislative framework, one of which, at this distance, might seem rather kind of uh, odd, rather quixotic. It was what was called the price page schedule, which was a way of checking predatory pricing by the larger <coughs> enterprises to drive the smaller players out of business. Now, the logic was very clear that the big players had access to the ad markets, and they could subsidize the selling price using the ad leverage that they have for the advertisers. Advertising does not qualify as free speech. Advertising is commercial speech, right? You know, the editorial and news coverage can claim that protection. Advertising cannot. There are specific circumstances in which uh, it is, it is uh, legitimate uh, to restrict what can be said and how it is said through advertising. 94, 95, the, that equilibrium begins to be upset by the cutthroat price competition. And the competition devalues editorial again because it makes newspapers more and more dependent upon uh, advertising to, to support the, uh, uh, the uh, bottom line. This is the context in which we step into the globalization era in the 1990s onwards. Now, what is the catch here? The catch here is that all these are priced at, at virtually zero. The, the information content itself is not valued. And the entire bottom line is supported by advertising. <coughs> and through the 90s, <coughs> uh, accelerating through the early years of this uh, century, you had enormous degree of concentration in the global market for advertising. In 2001, uh, we had a very vigorous debate here in India about foreign direct investment in the, in the newspaper industry. Because <coughs> events in the other media were all taking the shape of a fait accompli. Things were being done without any formal regulatory process or any kind of policy uh, thinking going on. So you had by default uh, rampant growth of cable and satellite television that was completely unregulated and based upon principles of ownership, which till today remain completely opaque. Now, if you look at uh, some of the ownership patterns of the major news channels that you depend upon for your prime time dose of noise and uh, hyperbole, you don't know. You don't know who owns that and whose agenda they're serving. In 2001, after the bitter competitive war between the Star Times and Times of India, the anti-FDI voices got relatively uh, subdued and they allowed foreign direct investment up to a certain uh, percentage of the total equity. 100% FDI was allowed in advertising agencies and in market research. So you were having the small patch of territory called the print media, which is trying to heroically hold up the national flag and say we are the last readout of, of the true nationalist uh, sentiment. When all around it, the, uh, the territory is being colonized by foreign capital. I think the dynamic of the advertising, driven by a, a fairly compromised and corrupt market research uh, process, uh, is driving the destruction of uh, diversity in our media.